Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Brittany Daniel. I just recorded a video about how to move, like how to. I have one on like courage and I have one on like giving you step by step on how to physically move like without all the fluff. So if you guys are interested in that, go check that those two videos out. I actually did an empty apartment tour on this apartment here. So if you wanna check that out, that video is up as well. But welcome and if you are new, thank you so much. Welcome to the fam. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. I will give you tips on how to get your first apartment. So stay tuned for that. So if you are in a living situation where your parents don't 100% get on your nerves, they're willing for you to live with them, either rent free or as cheap as possible. You guys get along and they give you your food and they pay all the other bills. I recommend you stay your butt at home and save your money. <laughs> But if that is not in the cards for you or you just are willing to get your own space, make sure that you are ready to take on a task of living on your own. Don't think about just the rent. You have to think about your utilities, sometimes water, sewage, trash, um, alarm, security fees, um, lights, definitely and a light deposit, your deposit, and your application fee for your apartment. So there are a lot of fees and things that go into just having an apartment on its own, not just getting an apartment. So don't just think about the rent. There are bills that are associated with having rent. Also furniture and all that, and I'll get into that in a second. So I recommend just going out and looking for apartments that you can afford, um, look at the pricing. And even if you don't know if you can afford it, just go look at it anyway, get some prices. You don't even have to tell the people that you can't afford it. Just look around and see what's out there and see what you can possibly want. The second thing is once you lock down a location or an apartment that you want, ask the leasing people like while you're on the tour, what are your, what are your requirements of living here? Do I have to make a certain amount of money? What's the deposit? What's the application fee? When is the rent due? What's my late late rent grace period? That's very important. Just in case you're a couple days late, you need to know how many grace days you have. <laughs> Are the utilities included? What's the, um, what's the deal with the roommates, dogs, pets, all of that? Know those. Know every fee that's going to be associated with moving into your apartment. If this is your first time renting, be honest because once they do their background check or they do their check when you do the application, they're going to see your rental history and they're going to see your credit and all that. So make sure that you're very honest like, hey, this is my first apartment. Are there any requirements and things of that sort? I do not recommend doing out an application and paying the fee unless you know for sure that that's the apartment that you want. You don't have to do an application for every single apartment because they're pulling your background every single time. They're pulling your credit every single time. You don't want to do that. You want to make sure you leave it to one. If you can't get into that one, then step down and do it for the other. You don't want to just be putting out applications everywhere. It's not a job. It's an apartment. If you have never had an apartment before or you need a co-signer, they will tell you or you can ask. And what a cosigner is, is a cosigner is most of the time a parent or a family member that is a little bit more established that can say, okay, this person, you, I'm moving into this apartment and I am like their backup just in case anything goes wrong, they can't pay their rent. I am going to take responsibility for that. Don't abuse a cosigner because if you do not pay your rent or you do not communicate with your cosigner like, hey, I'm having trouble, I can't pay my rent, they're responsible for your rent and that's going to hit their credit and jack them up. So be open and honest with your cosigner. Don't put your cosigner in a bad thing. It is not their responsibility to pay. They're doing you a favor by being your cosigner. So don't think that you're obligated for anybody to cosign because I'm not cosigning. Nothing for nobody. Don't ever think that somebody owes you to be a cosigner just because they're their parent and if their credit or they, their history isn't that great then they may not be able to cosign for you. So that's something to keep in mind. Do not think that you're obligated for one. You may just have to wait a little longer and save up a little bit more money. Also another way is roommates are a great way to take the hit off of a big rent fee like a thousand dollars or whatever like that and a lot of people gave me crap in my budget video about putting five hundred dollars down for rent and that was for a roommate if you had a roommate then your rent can be a lot cheaper and sometimes you don't need a cosigner if there are two of you and it just takes the hit off of having um having that heavy rent. One thing I do recommend though is make sure if you are going into a roommate which is kind of a business 
business deal or partnership that that person is responsible and that they will pay their rent on time or they may have a backup plan if they cannot pay their rent on time. If you don't trust them to pay a tab on a to go out for dinner, I don't trust being roommates with that person. Um, that whole situation is very delicate. So if you guys want me to do a story time on my roommates or whatever, leave that down below. I won't get into that here. But just make sure you really trust that person because that can make or break a friendship. I've had it go both ways. So make sure you know what you're doing before you sign a lease with somebody. Is when you get a lease, a lease is normally six months, 12 months, or 18 months. It depends. So you need to ask and you need to know this. What a lease is, is a lease is your agreement for your rental history. So once you sign a 12 month lease, that means I agree from June to June or August to August or whatever, whatever month you sign your lease that you will live there that entire year or that entire duration of your lease. If you break your lease that hits your credit and you owe fees to that apartment depending on your lease. So reading your lease is extremely, extremely important. What breaking your lease means is that you have broken your contract and you don't want to do that because that can damage your rental history and your ability to rent again in the future. Okay, so really keep in mind that that is very important. If you sign a lease, make sure that you're going to be able to continue your lease for the entire year. Please, you need to ask what is included in my apartment? What am I supposed to pay on my own or what are my roommate and what are my roommate and I responsible for? Know those things up front. Then you, if you have a roommate, sit down with them and divvy up who's responsible for what bill or how you guys are going to proceed with the bills ahead of time. Are you guys going to half the rent? Is somebody going to pay the whole rent one month? Somebody pay the whole rent the next month? Really talk and understand who and what is responsible for everything. Another thing to just before I'm going to get off the roommates, but if you do have a roommate, I do not recommend going half on a couch or half on a TV. God forbid if you guys, you know, don't live together anymore or somebody moves out or just you guys outgrow each other and you just want your own space or you just whatever. You want to be able to take the things that you purchased with you. Like if I bought a TV, I want to be able to take my TV with me, not be like, OK, well, who's going to take the TV? And then it's an argument or you know, you have to pay that person for it. One person paid for one thing, the other person paid for another thing. So if they move out or something happens, they can take their things and you can either replace it or the new roommate can come in and you can use theirs, whatever. But just make sure that there's a clear understanding of what and who is responsible for what and what. If you do not have a roommate, don't want a roommate, you can pay a first time renter's fee. Now this is different in different states. I know Texas does have a first time renter fee in New York, it is extremely hard to get an apartment unless you lease it from somebody that is a private owner of a house, but definitely understand what are the ramifications. Also be prepared to pay the first and last month's rent or just your first month's rent up front before you even move in. And then maybe if you're moving in in the middle of the month, the prorated rent and on the first your rent is due again. So make sure you understand these things before you decide to fill out the application and you sign your lease what do I need to pay up front? And they're very open and honest. The leasing office will tell you all of these things, but it's good to ask the questions just in case they forget because they're humans and sometimes they do. So be prepared to pay certain fees up front before you even step foot into your apartment. Also having good credit history is going to guarantee that you can just get into almost any apartment. If you guys have questions on how to build credit or how to establish credit or how to get good credit i did make a video about that click the link and it will take you there after this video or just look on my channel and you'll see how to get great credit um, but you definitely want to make sure you keep your credit good so you don't have to worry about can i get into this apartment because of my credit and if you can't then you just have to work your way in order to get the apartment that you really want or house in the future you're also going to need furniture, and I've kind of spoken about this. Maybe you and your roommate could go half, but if you're living by yourself, that may be something that you can save up for while you're still living at your parents' house. So then when you move, you can furnish your apartment or go to Ikea, whatever the case may be. I know when I moved from Georgia to New York, I had to start all over because my little tiny studio apartment wasn't going to fit all of my big furniture from Georgia. So what I did is I just saved up before I moved. When I got there, I went on Ikea.com purchased everything, had them deliver it. I said I paid somebody to set up all the stuff. You want it to be a smooth process. You don't want to, you know, be in a big apartment with no furniture. It sucks. Like you don't want to sleep on an air mattress. You're paying all this rent. You might as well just stay at home, you know, where you're a little bit more comfortable. 
but at the same time it's really whatever you can afford and what you can do so the more you save ahead of time the better it will be also a great tip is to get furniture from your family and friends you kind of get things when people move or they downsize or they upgrade and I know a lot of people that I grew up with came up like that they just kind of like in college we just kind of got our parents stuff where we kind of worked to get the little things so don't be ashamed to take some stuff from your parents house you can always get new furniture but you rather have furniture than be sitting on the floor so be open to people donating you things giving you things be like oh yeah I'll take it arrange a time to get it picked up or if they can drop it off whatever the case may be but make sure that you're open to that and don't be too proud to get furniture from other people because honestly, sometimes you can get some really dope, expensive, good quality stuff for the free. I know a lot of this is overwhelming and it seems like a whole lot of money. If you budget and you break stuff down, which I made a budget video, but if you budget and break stuff down or just write everything down, you can get a snapshot of what you really need and you can keep track of it so it's not so overwhelming. And just go step by step and take your time. There's no rush got your whole life to rent an apartment <laughs> another thing to keep in mind when you move look at the neighborhood and what's around it is it a safe neighborhood maybe drive past the apartments at night do you will you feel safe that if you go out of town and people see you rolling bags are they gonna rob you when you leave or if they know you go to work from this time to this time will they rob you when you're not home really keep all those things into consideration what's the security like is it gated um Every apartment complex almost in Texas is gated, but every apartment complex in New York or anywhere, some other places are not. So really make sure that you understand that and that you feel safe, especially if you're a young lady and you're living by yourself for the first time. You want to, you want to be safe. You don't want to always watch your back every five seconds coming home or feel like you're going to get mugged or robbed just to live in an apartment. So make sure you feel safe. Make sure you, that you feel secure in your apartment, that you can sleep well at night. You can come home by yourself and you won't feel like you're being hassled. So the final tip is to always respect the space and the area that you live in. If you live in a really quiet neighborhood or a little up, a real upscale neighborhood or just a neighborhood in general, you want to be mindful of when you play your music, um, look at your lease and know like how many people you can have over. If, if there's a public pool, how many people you can have over the pool. Really read your lease and understand the terms and conditions so you don't get hit with fines or things that... Um, Fines are things or problems or issues or eyes on you that you do not need. You are an adult. You are grown. However, there you still have to respect other people in your space and you still have to respect the laws and rules of around you. It's not all about you. You have to live in a community. So start thinking like that because those are that's the difference between an adult and a child. It, you got to do adult things if you want to live an adult life. But overall, don't forget to enjoy your new space and congratulations if you have a new space. Um, congratulations if you're working towards it. Understand that things take time. Don't think that everything is going to happen overnight. Most of the time, you're not going to get your dream luxury apartment at a young age or your first apartment is not going to be your dream luxury apartment. I know all these people on YouTube have these amazing apartments with all this natural light and these big old windows. That comes with time, that comes with grind, that comes with hard work. If you are working at a fast food restaurant or retail, you just can't afford those things. And, and I know that because I've done it. So I understand it's okay. Th things will come with time. If you're 19, you have the rest of your life. Don't look at other people and think, oh, I have to have this now. Because look at them. You don't know their life. You don't know what they had to do to go through it. Even if it doesn't look like they didn't work hard to do it, you never know what they've done behind the scenes. So it's okay to just have a regular degular apartment or a regular degular furniture or whatever for the time being. Eventually, you'll set your goals and you'll work towards them and you will upgrade your life. Just be patient. It will happen. But thank you guys so much for watching. I love you for watching. And I will see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. And share it with a friend. Share this video. I think it's pretty dope. Give you a lot of good information. I love you so much. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.